Good afternoon all. I want to thank you for attending and for those tuning in, um, for listening and, and watching. Um, it's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce a panel um, that will be announcing and um, sharing uh, some interesting developments in relation to our uh, country's uh, border security and maritime security. Um, I'll ask the uh, Honorable Premier, um, MLA JP, um, to share a few words in relation to the announcements um, and then followed by um, his colleague, Minister Roy McTaggart, Minister of Finance and Economic Development. And uh, uh, lastly, but not leastly, um, Police Commissioner Derek Byrne to um, share how the developments will unfold. Mr. I am delighted today to be able to announce the names of the three Caymanians who will be in charge of Cayman's Customs and Border Control Agency and our new Coast Guard. The appointment of the director of the new Customs and Border Control Department and the commander and deputy commander of the Cayman Islands Coast Guard shows that the government is delivering on its promise to transform the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service Marine Unit into a Cayman Islands Coast Guard service. The Coast Guard is being established with dedicated resources to allow detection and interdiction of boats arriving in Cayman waters with drugs and guns, as well as illegal migrants. It will also have the ability to board and search vessels in our water and make arrests if needed. The idea of our own Coast Guard began to take shape under the Progressives-led administration in the last term of government. We committed to it in our manifesto, and today we are publicly putting that promise into reality. There has been a tremendous amount of behind-the-scenes work over the course of the past few years to get us to this point, and I commend the many people who have helped in the formation and success of a Cayman Islands Coast Guard. We were grateful to obtain the services of Mr. Phil Bostock, who is Commander in the United Kingdom's Maritime and Coast Guard Agency in January this year to assist in the development of the Coast Guard. I told members of the House and the public in March this year that work had already begun to improve border security and merge the customs and immigration agencies into a single border force. I am happy to be able to say today that as of the 1st of January next year, the Department of Immigration and the Cayman Islands Customs Department will merge to create the new Customs and Border Control Agency. Staff members have been involved in specialist joint operations and training continues in enhanced search and rescue capabilities. We have been assisted since January by Mr. Colin Brown of the United Kingdom Border Force, who's helping us make the customs and immigration merger effective. As I said earlier, all of the top spots in the Coast Guard are to be filled by loyal Caymanians. Our new commander, who is present here today, is Mr. Robert Scotland, who has more than 26 years of law enforcement experience, 10 of which have been in a strategic management capacity. Mr. Scotland is a former police superintendent and an excellent example of the caliber of Caymanians who are willing and able to serve their country in this extremely important role. Mr. Scotland has earned a reputation as a resourceful problem solver with excellent communication, analytical and leadership skills as he worked locally and regionally. These attributes will be an asset in the establishment of effective and efficient Coast Guard operations. The Lieutenant Commander is Mr. Leo Anglin, a former police inspector who has experience in command of the Joint Marine Unit and experience with the Cayman Islands Port Authority. Mr. Anglin is experienced in training and developing junior officers marine drugs and firearms interdiction, search and rescue, as well as strategic and operational law enforcement. 
He served as a capable tactical and operations inspector with the Joint Marine Unit of the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service. The Cayman Islands Coast Guard will be operationally independent but report to the Commissioner of Police. The appointment of Mr. Scotland and Mr. Anglin follows a recruitment process conducted by the Ministry of Human Resources and Immigration. I'm also very pleased to announce that on January the 1st of next year, Mr. Charles Clifford will take up the lead role as Director of Customs and Border Control. Mr. Clifford, a son of the soil, has worked his way up from a police cadet to a chief inspector. He has worked within central government in the role of Senior Assistant Secretary, now called Deputy Chief Officer, and ultimately Permanent Secretary and Chief Officer of Tourism, Environment, Development, and Commerce. And as many of you know, he was also the Minister for Tourism in one of my previous, uh, one of the governments um, in which I was previously uh, minister. He has served as the Collective Customs for over three years and is a qualified and practiced attorney. Mr. Clifford brings a wide range of solid and relevant experience to this new agency. I am confident that the team of officers and staff of the Immigration and Customs Department will support his leadership in the establishment of the new Customs and Border Control Agency, taking the security of our airports and seaport to world class. This new agency is tasked diligently to uphold the law in relation to customs duty, landing and entry, asylum seeking, and border control. The appointment of Mr. Clifford also follows a recruitment process conducted by the Ministry of Human Resources and Immigration. Now I'll invite uh, Minister Matt Taggart to uh, share a few words. Thank you, Mr. Howell. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just want to say how delighted I am to be here for this very this announce, important announcement this afternoon. Over the past year, a lot of activities and things have been taking place within the Ministry of, uh, of Finance in support of the changes that you start now to see uh, unfold before us with these, this import, these important appointments this afternoon. And as, as Minister of Finance, I like to state quite categorically just how supportive I am of the efforts that are being made to, to, uh, to make these changes and improve our border control and efficiency. I've had the privilege over the past little over a year to work with Mr. Clifford in particular as the, uh, the collector of customs. Customs, as you all know, does come under the, uh, the oversight of the Ministry of Finance. And I've been truly impressed with him and his capabilities and the progressive way he has led that department in the three, four years that he has been there. Some very important changes have been implemented and moving from a basis of compliance to one that is risk-based huge changes in terms of philosophy and approach, but he has led and he has the support of his, of his uh, co-workers. So I'm really impressed with him. The other two gentlemen from, for, the, uh, for the, the, the Coast Guard, I know them more by reputation. But what I know about them, and I look at those three gentlemen this afternoon, I say we are going to be in safe pair hands with them leading this effort to try and import, Im improve our security and make Cayman a safer place and keep our borders safe for us all. So I thank you with those few comments and just extend again my support to what's taking place here this afternoon. Uh, Commissioner. <laughs> thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Premier and members of the, the media. Firstly, can I congratulate our three uh, appointees? Uh, well done on your selection. I wish you well in the future. I'm certainly working, uh, looking forward to working with the team in the Coast Guard Command and Mr. Clifford then in his new position from January onwards. So for the past year, I've been working with Mr. Howell, Chief Officer, and the team in terms of a project steering group to bring us this far, to identify the requirements for Coast Guard and to put the the senior position, the senior leadership position in, te in uh, team in place. So today is a, a very good day. Very pleased to see the announcement um, of our two senior uh, leaders for the Coast Guard. 
uh, where is that going to bring us to the next stage of development where we put our strategic plans in place to progress the initiative to deliver a Coast Guard model, model for the Cayman Islands and what can we expect from that? Well, currently we have a joint marine unit that has depleted two numbers of around 14 people. Uh, the government cabinet have approved a strength of 42 for the Coast Guard, uh, Cayman Islands Coast Guard. This will allow us to provide a 24-7, 365 response capability uh, across the islands, including our sister islands. And our main focus is on criminal interdiction in territorial waters, whether that's dealing with firearms, drugs, illegal immigration, the hugely and significant important issue of search and rescue that is going to be top of our agenda, and then marine enforcement in our inland waters. We have lots of work to do in terms of meeting that. It's only in the last week or so I had a meeting with Cayman Islands Tourist Association, received complaints of jet skis, speeding, uh, disturbing the comfort of our visitors, snorkeling. So we're going to be paying some attention to that. So a very wide brief for the new Coast Guard Command. A lot of work to be done, and I think the first year we'll be setting about identifying the strategic plan, uh, the annual Coast Guard plan, reviewing our assets, we have uh, lots of recruitment to look at, lots of training to look at, to make sure we're a fit for purpose uh, service. It's a really exciting time as we go forward with full commitment uh, and buy-in from government, for which we're very grateful. And I think as we develop over the next couple of years, we'll see uh, fit for purpose vessels, highly trained, skilled personnel, uh, enabling us to properly police and add to the security framework the national security framework of the Cayman Islands. <coughs> and that's effectively it uh, in, in a nutshell, Chief Officer. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, at this time, we'll open up the floor for any questions you may have for us. Uh, I'm John Harris uh, with Radio Cayman. Um, first question is uh, simply, it was mentioned that the new agencies would be uh, adequately staffed and resourced. resourced. Um, do we know what the budgets look like for these uh, new departments? And I understand that the Coast Guard Department would be reporting to the police, so does that mean the police will see a bump in their budget, or will that be a completely separate budget for that agency? We, we do know what the budgets look like, but we're not at a point now where we're about to announce those things. We're still working through a whole range of of issues, but yes, we we have taken those things into account. Um, we have a two-year budget, as you're aware of, so we knew this was coming down the, the track. So most of these costs will will come into effect in in the second year of this two-year budget cycle. So plenty of time to make those announcements. When will the Coast Guard actually become operational? It sounds like you've got some recruiting to do, and I'm assuming the JMU moves over to the Coast Guard now. Is that correct with all its equipment? I think, Premier. Yeah, you go ahead, please. I think the best way to say there's going to be a transitional period. We put the senior leadership team in place to look at the big strategic picture, and while that's happening, we continue with JMU operations. And when we arrive at that stage for full transition, we'll move to Coast Guard. So incremental development as we go forward, go forward over the next number of months. So do you expect to be hiring largely from within the police force, or are you going to have an open hiring uh, or even a training um, event, I guess, or a course like you have for, for police officers? Well, I think, again, I can answer it by saying there will be some transition from JMU to Coast Guard, and then I believe the way I'm looking at it at the moment and the discussion I've had with Chief Officer and the Ministry, direct entry of new personnel to build up the capacity that we require. Different set of skills to police officers. That's why it's a ring-fenced budget, a ring-fenced entity uh, working as Coast Guard. So while there's great interdependability and interoperability, completely separate entities, it just happens they're reporting to the Commissioner of Police under the National Security Framework. We also, um, I can clarify, we also have the support of the UK um, Coast Guard um, in the likes of Mr. Phil Bostock, who remains on island until the end of the year, um, adding his support, and we're now talking about additional support from the U.S. and the U.K. Coast Guards as we go forward in building out our training and strategic plans. So I think it's important that we all understand, uh, as we have, as we've worked through the, the plans to develop this, is that 
this is going to take time. And when I say time, this is going to take a number of years to get us to uh, the kind of Coast Guard that we envisage uh, Cayman will actually need. Uh, we're not going to try to, to go from where we are now to warp speed in six months. We're going to take time and do this properly. It's going to require significant, I mean that, significant investment in assets to be able to give us the capability we need to properly police these waters and provide the, the safety um, component as which you expect of a Coast Guard. But, so we're working through that and we're planning for it in, in budget terms as well. I mean, there's been historic problems with the maintenance of the of the JMU boats, <coughs> I think. I mean, how many boats do you currently have that are uh, seaworthy and how many boats will you be getting as part of this? I can help there. So our two main boats are Defender and Guardian. They've just come back after major refurbishment approved by government. Uh, Defender, just the Guardian just arrived back two weeks ago. Defender has been refurbished at a significant cost. They're now back in action with three interceptor um, ribs that we have as well and two jet skis. And the function of the senior leadership team in the Coast Guard is to review our assets, working, as Chief Officer says, with UK Coast Guard and other agencies that will assist us to identify unique requirements for the Cayman Islands Coast Guard and incrementally build our capacity. I mean, I mean, there was an incident a few years ago, I think a, a tragic case where five lives were lost at sea. And I just wanted to ask like, how influential that case was in, in everyone's thinking in terms of um, increasing the capacity that, that the Cayman Islands has to deal with, with those kind of um, events. Well, without question, that brought this, this issue into, into, um, into stark relief. But uh, this is a, the development of a Coast Guard was was part of my party's uh, manifesto uh, when we ca campaigned in 2013. And that didn't just come out of the blue. That that was because of the experience that a number of us had, had in government uh, prior to that, um, where we understood quite clearly that, that Cayman was deficient um, for a place as, as successful and well off as we are, we're deficient, really deficient in, in that um, in that area. So, yes, that that certainly brought this into sharp focus. We had a report and, and so forth, and there was great debate in the House and and more broadly. So yes, that that uh, um, certainly helped um, with the motivation. But this was always within our our plans, though not until recently within our grasp. Gentlemen, can I just get some clarity about the shapes and forms of these agencies? Because they all seem to me to be overlapping a little. So, for example, with the Coast Guard, which will be doing interdiction of criminal entry as well as um, search and rescue. So will you also be having immigration staff, customs staff? Because obviously people might smuggle, non, not guns or drugs, but... They might be smuggling just regular goods to avoid duty. So will you have staff from customs? Will you have staff from um, emergency services? And will you also have staff from immigration in the Coast Guard, as well as obviously one assumes Border Patrol is going to have immigration and all of those factors as well. Also, the fire service has just got this new these new boats and everything. So will that be part of it? And if so... Which ministries are these all going to fall under? Because you've got three ministries there involved. So I just want to get some clarity on how and what, and whether these people that go to these individual, will they still be immigration staff? Will they still be custom staff? Will they still be fire service? Just to give me an idea of how this is going to be structured, if you can. No, the, the whole idea is to create a standalone unit. So I'll let those who are, are more operationally versed about this that I you know, go into the details. But the idea is is not to have what we have now, which is a joint marine unit, but to create a standalone unit, although over the transition period, no doubt there'll be a certain amount of, of that kind of thing required. But the objective in the long term is to have a standalone Coast Guard um, agency, which performs the usual functions you would expect of any Coast Guard anywhere in, in the world. Obviously, you expect the usual cooperation between the agencies, uh, depending on what particular 
operation or, or mission they're engaged in. But I'll invite the commissioner or, or um, Mr. Howell to, to comment because they, they know more about the actual operations than I do. So we have a, a, a steering committee made up of um, agencies including the airport, the seaport, um, customs, immigration, um, the police, um, now soon to be the Coast Guard, that are working collectively on the plans and strategies um, to set out um, the, the, the remit of the, the National Coast Guard, covering those areas that are that are necessary for law enforcement, um, search and rescue. The work that's being done um, with the fire department has been done in consultation with the Joint Marine Unit and with the UK Coast Guard in terms of training and equipping. Um, and we see their actions in, in terms of rapid re response from their various locations that provide that additional support for particularly search and rescue um, operations. But the Coast Guard is, is going to be standalone um, with training and, and um, expertise and equipment such that they can carry out all those roles that are involved with border security and, and search and rescue. You mentioned that the police will now be the Coast Guard. Um, just elaborate on the difference between the two because we know that the police already, the Marine uh, Joint Unit, already has uh, immigration staff on board with them. Um, what, what, just elaborate in depth what, what is the significant difference between the two. Um, so to, to, to further clarify, the situation we have now is that the Joint Marine Unit, as it's known, is made up of staff from um, the police service, um, from customs and immigration. And as Premier and, and Commissioner have shared earlier, the, the, the operation of the JMU leaves a lot to be desired in terms of capability for, for a variety of reasons. So the Coast Guard, as it will progress um, going forward, will end up replacing the, the, that joint relationship and end up with dedicated officers that will cover all those remits that are now being covered on the, the Joint Marine Unit. And the JMU, as we now know, it will fall away. signing up well, what, are they, what are they signing up for um, in terms of, of being on the water uh, you want to clarify what you what you mean by that Jake you said um, sorry you said they, they will be signing up in, in, in terms of a different type of contract uh, what, what, what kind of contract are, are these people so they be re recruited and as, as have been the two gentlemen there as um, Coast Guard employees, um, so they're employees of the Coast Guard, falling under the command of Mr. Scotland under the direction of the Police Commissioner. Um, but they're dedicated officers for the, the Coast Guard. So not police officers, not customs officers, not immigration officers, but so, Coast Guard officers. So, so I, I think, I think what, <laughs> what Mr. Russell is getting at, is, uh, which has been a, a problem for as long as we can remember, is the constant issues about swapping police officers in and out will go away because these will be employees of the, the of the national coast guard not available at, at the whim of even the commissioner to say i want you over here to run traffic uh, next week which you know, <laughs> which has been a problem in the past not with this commissioner of course but um <laughs> in the past historically <laughs> just real quick uh you did say that this would take some time, but when do you envision um, to actually commence the recruitment for the new officers? Maybe I can help there. So the Coast Guard Commander and Lieutenant Commander or Deputy Commander will start early October. We'll sit down and look at our business strategies and move it. We'll progress it as expeditiously as we can. There is obviously a recruitment process and selection criteria to be looked at. And as soon as we can progress it down, we'll discuss it with we we'll bring it to National Security Council, Cabinet and, and Premier and Government and get all the necessary approvals which are in place in principle. Uh, just to elaborate on that um, recruitment process, will this be something that is individually done or would it be um, like the police and the fire department, uh, uh, the prison services uh, recruiting an academy? Uh, all at once, uh, putting everyone together at once and giving them the training strategies. 
Well, to answer, say, from, from, from perspective of um, Coast Guard, we'll be recruiting Coast Guard officers, and there will be a specific competition set up for that. And as I said, direct entry recruitment seems to be the preferred method, as, as we understand it at the moment. But we have a lot of discussions to have with the new senior leadership team and come back to Chief Officer and, and, and Cabinet. So a lot of stuff will happen over the coming months. We generally have developed a framework. It's to move through that framework now as quickly as we can. I just have, just whilst we're still on this sort of subject of the staff, just to get some clarity. The, the, the Coast Guard will be dealing with search and rescue and interdiction of crime and immigration and potential customs issues, whereas, Mr Clifford, you will be dealing with in, in customs issues here on the, on the island and immigration issues here on the island at the, at the actual border, right? Land-based, yes. Land-based. Yeah. So effectively, you, Mr. Clifford's department staff will be made up of a combination of existing customs officers and immigration, so there'll be no extra recruitment necessary for you. It will just be the police that would actually probably need to recruit people with immigration and customs experience as well. Is that, am I right? You're still going to need those skills. No, I mean, I think the Premier has said it out, we'll be working jointly, joined up thinking whole of government approach to maritime interdiction. So there will be distinctly ring-fenced resources for Coast Guard. So, yeah. so do, <coughs> I, I think I know what, where Wendy is going. So during the transition period, there's going to still be a, a considerable amount of cooperation and, and use of, of the resources, including human resources that are already in place. But over time, the National Coast Guard will develop its own experience, its own expertise, its own abilities to run its operation without a great deal of involvement of other agencies. Although you can, uh, on, on particular operations or issues, you can see where cooperation will always be, will always be required. But the objective is to have a standalone agency that is not subject to what the, the, the director of Customs and Border Control wants, or what the Commissioner wants, or what some other agency wants, but is is able to carry out its own, um, its or exercise its own operational independence with respect to to issues. Subject always to being under the ultimate uh, control of of the um, Commissioner of Police, because it is, after all, a national security issue. Uh, we know that the, um, the UK commissioned the study and did help to pay for that study that would go on to produce the report on the failings of the um, Coast Guard systems or lack thereof throughout the entire British Caribbean. Uh, will the UK be contributing to or financially to the start up of um, a Coast Guard agency here in Cayman or will we be you know responsible for footing the bill on our own? Well, the UK has already been extremely helpful. Uh, the persons that they have lent to us to help us with, with this are, 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 you know, they're paying for them, and they're um, really highly experienced individuals. Um, there may be other aspects the UK <coughs> helps us with as well as we as we get up to speed. But ultimately, we will bear the cost of the National Coast Guard as we bear the cost of any other agency we, that falls under the the remit of government. But the UK has been very, very helpful and very supportive. Just a final question, which is regarding the helicopter. Um, if that's going to be involved much more in search and rescue now, will you need to modify it further? Will we have to be spending some money on it? I think we'll do more than that. I think we'll, we'll get another one. More to come. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> one of the one of the things, and and I call him Minister Clifford, uh, he, as he was then, will remember well. One of, one of the the great benefits of staying around in in politics for a while is is you get to see things like um, like the helicopter purchase for which my government at the time was beaten to death at uh, this huge expense, become now um, the 
greatest thing that you know that we've ever employed in terms of search and rescue and and um, crime prevention. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, the the helicopter has been used and continues to be used for a whole range of things, which perhaps were never even contemplated when we purchased it. And um, I see it being able to continue to function, and especially if we get another one um, to provide the necessary backup and um, some of the some of the abilities which the current one lacks, um, being a very key tool in you know in the full range of services that we are trying to provide in terms of surveillance, um, border protection, prevention of crime, life saving assistance to other territories as we've proven. And the UK is, has been incredibly supportive and appreciative of what we were able to do during the hurricanes last year. And um, I hope we can continue to work with them as we seek to acquire another bird. Remain under the police service, and mm. it would just work in cooperation with the Coast Guard. That's how you you would do that. Yes, for the yes. that would remain under the police service. Apart from anything to do with coastal defence or maritime interdiction, there's an awful lot of work to be done inland, used by the helicopters. So, multifunctional, and as the Premier said, developments to come in the future. If there are no additional. Um, questions, I'd like to invite the three um, bright, upstanding Caymanians who have been appointed to um, join us for a photo op um, and invite you to um, take photos of the same. Thank you very much.